the original technology, the proof of concept started 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the technology was very simple and very basic over the next 15, 20 years. Eventually, it, was, it got started to be commercialized by a company in Colorado called XY. And when the product was first launched, it was a product that the, the fertility was significantly lower than conventional semen. The cost of the product was significantly higher than conventional semen. And in reality, not the best genetic bulls were available like they were in conventional semen. So in a sense, sex semen, the greatest thing he had for it at that time was it was able to make a female calf. That was about it, right? Um, and that gave a start to the product. But over the next 15 years, we have always lived with the model that we wanted to solve those issues. We wanted to solve the fertility issue. We wanted to solve the issue of the product being too expensive. And we wanted to make the higher quality genetic bulls available to the end user. And in a sense, we just dedicated ourselves and, and the whole fam ST family to, to doing research and development. And that led to a series of uh, advancements in the technology. So there's basically three different sets of advancements in the technology. One is from the equipment standpoint. So we literally moved from the old era of analog technology to the new digital technologies and the increased computer powers that came along with that aspect of it. The optics of the system were improved, the fluidics of the system were improved, and obviously the software and the, the, the data analysis that involved in the system was improved. That led to a very significant improvement in efficiencies. By improving the efficiencies, the cost of the product came down. It also allowed the higher genetic pools to be available in sex because the reality was before the technology got improved, the technology was so inefficient that if a bull could make a thousand shots of conventional, he would only make a couple hundred shots of sex. Now the technology changed, we basically can make about similar quantities of semen in conventional sex. So through equipment improvements and logistical improvements in the process, the cost of the product came down. And that reduction in cost was transferred to the end user. And most end users have seen over the last 10 years how the cost of sex semen has come down. Second and the biggest issue we had was fertility, which was a big monkey in our bag. Uh, that's just the reality of life. It was a difficult issue to tackle and a very difficult issue to solve. Mm -hmm. So we, what we did, we followed a procedure where we took, if there were 80 steps in the process of producing a straw sex semen, we partitioned each one of those steps into subsections. Mm -hmm. And we started doing research and development into each individual subsection and fixing the problem in each subsection. And at the same time, we needed to corroborate that we, what we were doing was actually making a difference. So we started running trial after trial. So we ran trials in the United States, we ran trials in Canada, we ran trials in Germany, in New Zealand, in Australia, in Brazil, all over the world. We wanted to run it in the different geographical conditions, on the different management conditions, and come to the realization that we made a change. And as a result of all those trials, a significant number of changes were made in the way we, we handled the biology of the sperm cell. And we saw a significant increase in the fertility product. So the original product in reality had probably about 75% of the fertility that conventional semen had. So if the conventional semen straw had 50% fertility, 75% of 50 is 35, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what we managed to do, we were able to improve it to about 90, 92% of the fertility of conventional semen. So instead of being conventional was 50%, 90% is now 45%. So we were within a striking distance at that point in time. And that was for straws that had 2 million cells and that product became in the, park, in the marketplace known as Sex Ultra. And then we got curious because a, a conventional straw of semen has more cells in the straw than a sex straw. A conventional straw of semen has 10 million cells and now we really need to put in two million cells. So we started asking ourselves, what if we put more cells? Could we further increase the fertility? So we started running trials where we're putting instead of two million cells, putting three million cells, four million cells. And effectively, those trials ended up giving us data that is what is called those responses. We increased the number of cells, fertility increased. Mm -hmm. And we came to the conclusion that after a multitude of trials, 
that if we put four million cells, the fertility of sex semen now was very getting very close and comparable results to conventional semen, right? So we were within a striking distance now. And, and that's how the 4M product came to be. So long story short, getting to 4M, Sex Ultra 4M has been a 10 year process. Mm -hmm. So obviously we grew around the sex semen product. Uh, originally, uh, we've been in the, in the reproduction business uh, for 30 years. Um, so we started as what is well known in the industry as a custom collection facility for bulls. Basically people will bring their bulls, we collect conventional semen for them, process it, Sometimes we will help them market their semen. And we did the same thing with embryos. We collected embryos, we transferred embryos, but it was always a service oriented. So mostly we all been, we've been through our lives mostly a service oriented facility. And we did that with sex semen. We started providing services to third parties and processing the semen of the bulls in the sex part. So today we do continue to process conventional semen for third parties. We do continue to make regular embryo transfers. We do have couple of in vitro fertilization laboratories mm -hmm. and then we we eventually thought as the, as we saw the industry make progress genomics came to be and we thought it was important to be part of the genomic area so era so we got into genomic testing so we now um, have genetic visions and mm -hmm. there's located in Wisconsin and, and we do genomic testing services for for breeders all over the world team of dedicated R&D geneticists for the for the genomic testing. Now we have uh, expanded ourselves into swine genetics, so we have a company that is based out of Canada it's called Fast Genetics. We, we distribute swine genetics in, the, in North America mostly, Canada and the United States. And then we, we do have, as part of the sex semen services, we deal with other species, like we, we do sheep, we do goats, we do horses, we do deer. Mm -hmm. And it's just part of all the service-oriented philosophy that we have as a company. And then the last thing that we got involved is into what we call ST genetics. So we do have genetics on our own bulls. Mm -hmm. um, and we sell genetics. We're, we're the smallest of all the genetics companies in that sense mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, the reason that we got involved in genetics was number one, we, we needed bulls of good genetic background so we could run our trials. And number two, we wanted to make sure that the highest quality genetics were available in sex semen to the end user. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was, a, it was a, we were driven to, to solve the three original issues that we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. the, the cost, the fertility, and the quality of the genetics. Mm -hmm. So the last piece of the puzzle was making sure that the highest quality genetics bulls were available in sex. Okay. That's a possibility in a sense, but we, number one, we handle it as two independent things, right? The second part of it is the reality of life is the marketplace is fairly large, mm -hmm. fairly um, not just in the United States and North America, but worldwide. And in, this, in the whole speck of it, in the whole world, we're just a little tiny fraction of any of the bull studs. Mm -hmm. To pretend that, that we will be at the same level of bull studs that have been around for 40, 60, or 70 years is not a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're very humble as to what we have. We're small. We just simply try to do things well, that's all. Because, and it maybe it's an advantage that we're small in that sense, mm -hmm. that because we're so small, we can concentrate on and and doing things super well, mm -hmm. right? I guess when you get larger and bigger and bigger in size, it's a little bit more difficult to, to hold those qualities of excellence. Mm -hmm. I think that the, 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 the market for genetics is, is, like I said earlier, is, is fairly large around the world. Mm -hmm. um, Sex semen today is, is a very, very small part of the overall semen market. I mean, today 95% of all semen that is sold is conventional semen. Um, so I think that sex semen itself has a long ways to grow. But at the same time, I think that we're seeing a confluence of different technologies occurring at the same time. So sex semen is just one of those technologies. Genomics is another one of those technologies. In vitro fertilization is another one. Embryo transfer is another one. And, you know, uh, robotics is another one. There's a multitude of these technologies. So I think the question is, how do all those technologies integrate with one another mm -hmm. for the long term? With always with one purpose in life, which mm -hmm. is, is to how to be part of the end user being more profitable. Mm -hmm. if, if the end user is not profitable, 
we as a company cannot stay in business. Mm -hmm. And so the single most important factor for us is the profitability of the end user. It's, it's, a, it's been a, a, a really rewarding experience in life. Uh, first of all, we're like a, like a family. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we treat each other as equals. Mm -hmm. We're all driven by the same desires of, of doing things well. We enjoy what we do. It's just fun to do what we do. Uh, and I think that, that people feel it every day. And, and I'm very, 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 very proud of all those that have been uh, helping us out for all these years. Um, if you look at our senior management staff, immediate management staff, we, we hardly ever lose anybody. It's people that have been with us for 10, 15, 20 years, right? Um, we're just a family. It's, 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 it's all part of being a family. And, and that's what makes it fun. Mm -hmm. because, because when you're successful as a family, the joy is greater for everybody. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I think that's what's made a big difference.